Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another day of palette week. Again, I'm not sure what order these videos are going to be going up in, so I don't want to say like, well, go back to day two and then it's going up on day five. But I am really excited for today's video. We are going to be talking about some of the worst eyeshadow palettes that I recall ever using in my life. And we're just going to rant about some crappy eyeshadow palettes and I would love to get your guys' feedback in the comments below about the worst palettes you have tried in your life. Maybe I'm thinking about buying some of them and you could save me a dollar or two by telling me how bad they are in the comments. I would love to have a combo about some crappy palettes down there. So leave me your comments. Let me know. Other than that, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love if you would consider subscribing before you leave. We do a ton of chatting about eyeshadow on this channel, makeup in general. We do a lot of project panning. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, I would love if you would subscribe before moving on. But other than that, you guys, Let's just get into this video. Okay, I feel like we have a lot of like red slash burgundy going on today with the scrunchy, the lips, and the hair. Or I mean the shirt. Well, the hair too, but my hair didn't turn out burgundy. I tried to add some burgundy to it and it didn't work. Um, anyway, you guys, okay, so I have, I have like nine-ish eyeshadow palettes to talk to you about today. And I don't think I own any of them anymore and these are some of the worst eyeshadow palettes i can recall ever trying in my life so starting with the first do you guys remember the boxy charm and pure that had like the two pops of color and i think it was like a blue and a pink and boxy charm and pure i've done a couple of palettes together at this point quite a few actually and I feel like there have been some decent ones, but that one in particular, it was like, like you had to like grab like a scalpel and like scrape at the shadow to even get the pigment to pick up. It was so dry. It offered no pigmentation and it was just truly one of the crappiest eyeshadow palettes I have ever used. Like it wasn't like you could even like get it onto your eye to find out if it was like a chalky formula that was going to blend away into anything or like a formula that was going to get all muddied together like you literally couldn't even pick up pigment from this it was so so bad and uh, i recently did unsubscribe to my boxy base back i feel i feel like every single time i get a palette in my boxy charm i'm just like nah, 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 no so that was definitely one of the worst palettes that i remember ever trying in my life uh, next up, so I purchased this palette. This was limited edition and I purchased this when I was first getting into YouTube and watching YouTube and starting to grow my makeup collection. And the reason I selected this palette was because it had like blushes and eyeshadows, but it was the Smashbox. I think it was called the Artistry palette. And it was, first of all, it was like bigger than like, like the dictionary. Like it was such a, such large packaging and you opened it up and it had two sides and again it had blushes and it had eyeshadows and it was super colorful which at the time like I knew nothing about how to do makeup. I mean I could barely put chapstick on at the time I feel like let alone figure out how to play around with color. So that in and of itself was like I probably just shouldn't have picked up such a colorful palette but then there were some shades that like performed well and then there were other shades where again it's just like they were so dry and so chalky like you couldn't blend them so me and my like very novice level skills like I just couldn't get it to blend and I looked ridiculous every time I tried to use this and it took me a really long time to finally decide that I wanted to declutter that palette I feel like part of it being that it was like a little bit nostalgic to me and I purchased it when I was first trying to grow my collection and I really remember liking or thinking I needed like the blush shade still in that palette this was before I had a blush collection of like 85 blushes which I do right now um so ridiculous but yeah, that one too, not a good palette. And I get like, that was a while ago. I feel like uh, uh, eyeshadow standards and just like eyeshadow formulas in general have gotten so much better than like the 2015, 2016 era. But speaking of, speaking of Smashbox, I think it was two or three years ago, they had a holiday collection that had three of their cover shot palettes and it was like a really good price i swear it was like 39 dollars for three cover shot palettes 
I remember opening it up and I went to use one of the cover shot palettes and again it was like the situation where you almost had to like scrape at the eyeshadow with like a scalpel or like a knife to get even your brush to pick up any pigment it was the worst ever and I just ever since then like they'll release cover shot palettes where I'm like oh my gosh like I love that color story I think that's beautiful and I want to buy it but I remember my experience with the cover shots from that holiday collection and maybe it was because it was a holiday collection but I feel like in general I don't hear great things about these cover shot palettes I just cannot buy them even when I love the color story because it was so bad I did end up returning that set I tried I literally tried one of the palettes tried to use it and I was like this is so bad I'm not even going to try the other two and I immediately just went and took it back to Sephora because I was so disappointed let me know if you have tried a cover shot palette that has actually been a good formula I would love to know because that was really bad Next up on my list, I was really disappointed in this. First of all, I just shouldn't have purchased this. I like let the excitement of the Sephora VIV sale get to me as I always do. And this was, I feel like I had, I had a pretty large collection at this time, but I don't know that I had any Marc Jacobs palettes and it was around holiday time. And I felt like the holiday before everyone was talking about the big Marc Jacobs holiday palette that was a hundred dollars. And I was like, how could anyone ever spend a hundred dollars on a palette? And then I had the 20% off and I was like you know what I'm gonna get the Marc Jacobs $100 palette and you guys I remember I went into the store saw the palette and it was like zebra packaging it was that one and I remember being like I think I might buy that today but I was gonna walk around and see if there was anything else that I wanted and I feel like a part of me wanted this because I used to be super into animal print I still love a good leopard print anything literally anything I mean here it's a little leopard print um but like at that point in time, like I even liked zebra print. So I feel like that was like kind of selling me too, just the packaging. So I'm walking around the store and I go back over to grab the palette because I had talked myself into buying it at this time. And there had only been one palette left and then someone had grabbed the palette and taken it. And I saw the girl who grabbed the palette and put it in her basket. And I remember looking at her and being like, I want that palette. Like literally that thought went through my mind. Like how crazy, it's a freaking makeup palette. You should not be that passionate and upset that someone else is buying this $100 palette that's gonna end up being so crappy you shouldn't be buying it anyway. But I was so upset that she had grabbed the palette. But I ended up asking if they had any more in their little like drawer, a back sock, and of course they did. So I ended up buying this palette and I tried to get myself to like this so many times. But there was only a few mattes in there. The mattes muddied together. I remember I used this palette before we went and got Christmas pictures taken with Santa. And I was so pissed off at the way that my eye makeup looked that day. I was like, I spent so much money on this palette and it is so crappy. And there are some really pretty like lid topper shades in there too. But I never wanted to just grab this huge bulky packaging and grab for just like one shade in there so I a part of me is just like upset with myself for spending the money and I actually have some of the seven pan Marc Jacobs palettes that I actually really like I actually only have one but I really like the one that I still have and I think the formula on that's really good but the holiday one so bad so so bad I finally ended up decluttering it and I'm sorry to the girl that I uh thought those mean thoughts about because you grabbed it and like I wonder if you feel the same way oh my gosh you guys next on my list I don't feel like this is an unpopular opinion at this point, but the Jaclyn Hill Vault Collection palettes. I do know that there are people out there that got good ones and really like it, but Bling Boss, which was the purple one I think I got, and then I also got Dark Magic. And this was again at a time where like I was just so comfortable in neutrals and using neutrals that why I bought the Dark Magic palette, I really don't know. I think I bought it, there was like one shade in there that looked so beautiful. And this was when I started to get into green. So like that forest green in there was really calling to me, but these were so bad. These were literally so, so bad. So dry, not very pigmented. I remember the Bling Boss one, I was so excited. I got home the day I purchased it. I wasn't gonna buy these, then I went into my Ulta and my Ulta had them and I was like, oh, it must be a sign because my Ulta carries them. Cause that's how that works. Um, but I went home that day, right after I bought it, it was like after work, I washed off my makeup. I never do this where I wash off my makeup and just like play around with makeup after work. So I started to use the Bling Boss palette and 
every shade that I put on like I struggled to blend and then I was like okay like maybe it's just the mattes maybe I'll just struggle blending the mattes so then I was like but surely like it's not that hard to make a shimmery shade so like the actual like metallics are gonna be amazing I had to build my metallic shade up so much and dig in so much. I swear I would have hit pan on that shadow within like a few uses. Even wet, it was just not a good situation. I remember my daughter played with the Dark Magic palette. I don't even know if I ever used the Dark Magic palette on my personal eyes with the exception of maybe one shade. And I just was not impressed at all with those uh, vault collection palettes as I know many others weren't. Uh, next up on my list, this was a bummer because I expected to really enjoy these, but the two Huda Gemstone palettes that I picked up. So I picked up the green one, which was the Emerald Obsessions, as well as the purple one, which was the Amethyst Obsessions and Granite. I still wasn't comfortable with color, but these were just hard to use. I wasn't impressed with the metallic shades and I didn't think that the mattes blended very well. I thought that they were skippy. I thought that they were dry. I thought they were chalky. I thought they muddied up and I was just really disappointed because I believe I had all six of the original Obsessions palettes at this point and I love the Huda Obsessions palettes. They are some of my favorite, especially for travel. They're so easy. They're compact. I feel like they are nice and curated where it's like very easy to just look in and know what you're going to create with your look. But I just was not impressed with the gemstone line in general. I don't know if you can even, I think the ruby one might still be available, which always looks beautiful. And I'm like, oh, should I get that? But I'm like, no, you didn't like the formula of this one. Uh, so you guys will have to let me know if you felt the same way about the gemstone line in general with Huda. But I, those were some of the worst eyeshadows I remember using as well. Oh my goodness, this next one. I remember when I purchased this next one, so I'm talking about the NYX Air palette. Do you guys remember when they came out with the whole Elements collection and they did them with the influencers or whatever? So like each influencer had a different like element and I ended up going with the NYX Air because it was colorful and I just like, I would buy colorful palettes when I never used color because I thought, this palette is going to be the one palette that's going to get me into color. So I picked up the Air, which was more pastel. And it just, like, I believe it was, like, close to $30. It was some outlandish price. And I remember this is when, like, people were in an uproar that NYX was charging this much for their eyeshadow because people already felt like NYX was going up in price, etc. And I picked up the Air palette and I maybe used it two times and it was awful, like no pigmentation. I was like, I cannot believe I spent $30 on this. I almost returned it, but I was like, no, like whatever. I'm going to find a way to make this work. There was like, I think there was like a shimmery, like a metallic green shade in there that I was like, this is beautiful or maybe it was a purple. But I kept that palette around for so, so long and it was so bad. Like I swear, if I'm remembering correctly, you couldn't even like I couldn't even come up with a full look that I could create out of that palette so it ended up just being something I would reach into for like lid toppers but then you would try and top your lids and it was like no pigment was there even with the wet brush it was awful awful and I spent $30 on it I was so disappointed in myself because I remember walking around Ulta for probably 15 minutes that day being like you shouldn't buy this $30. It's not going to be a good quality. No one has anything good ever to say about NYX eyeshadows. Why are you even thinking of doing this? And then after 15 minutes, I somehow found myself up at the cashier with the air palette in my hand. Big regret. All right, I have two more to talk about you guys. This next one was such a bummer and I know so many other people have this palette and love it but I swear I got one I swear there was like a bad batch and I got a bad one because I know there's a handful of people out there that didn't enjoy this palette and I am one of them and this was the Natasha Denona Safari palette I was so freaking excited when I saw the teasers for this I loved the outer packaging I loved the color story loved it loved that it was all matte I was so excited for this I swear I bought it like on launch day which normally like I never would do let alone buy like a Natasha Denona $129 palette on launch day I remember getting it and this was another time where like I immediately took my makeup off and was like I'm gonna play around with this palette and I started with the cool toned row that had like the blues in it um and 
whatever look I came up with I was like this is so disgustingly muddy like this is awful I took it off and I was like it's probably just because I'm not good at playing around with these cool tones so then I went in there was like a mauve shade and I tried to do something just very neutral that I would be comfortable with and I remember when I was trying to blend like it was almost like you could not blend the shadows together and there was just this very harsh line that just like no matter what I would put over it it was like nothing would blend together and it was like you could tell like it was like like a mauve and then a brown or like a brown and then a mauve and I just could not get them to blend so that I remember going on and like searching and I found Mel Thompson's video and Mel loves Natasha Denona shadows but she was having some of the same issues with the Safari palette so I didn't feel as alone in that and I remember I tried using that palette I must have tried seven to ten different looks with this I used every single shade multiple times because I was like it must just be something with me it must just be the color combinations I'm trying to do maybe there's like enough shades in here that'll work for me that it'll be worth keeping but I ended up selling it on my Poshmark I didn't return it. I just sold it on my Poshmark I was so so bummed but like for $129 it was some of the most terrible eyeshadow I've ever tried and it made me very very hesitant to purchase Natasha Denona shadows for quite quite a while so you guys love to let me know I know there are so many people who love the Safari palette but unfortunately it just did not work for me there have been times where like the Safari palette has been on sale and I've almost bought it again being like well maybe if I were to try it again or maybe I just got a bad batch that's how much I love the color story and wanted it to work for me but I need to stand strong and definitely not buy that one again and then the last palette you guys I was so disappointed in this and I feel like I did or I was going to do like a dedicated palette review on my channel and thank god I didn't because this was like in the very beginning stages of my youtube channel but it was the Kylie take me on vacation palette do you guys remember that one it was like it was in like the early year stages of Kylie Cosmetics um, and it was like the long nude packaging. It was like very aesthetically pleasing and then it had that pop of blue in it and I was like oh my gosh this palette is like my jam. Like I'm going to freaking love this. I ordered it on launch day because I was worried it was going to sell out and I feel like it did sell out. And I remember I wish I would have bought like the highlighting palette because I feel like that sold out and everyone loved that. But uh, the first time I used this palette I got hard pan on like every single shade that I used and I remember being like was my brush wet when I dipped into this like why did I get hard pan immediately after digging into these and then the blue shade the like pop of blue was a metallic did not show up at all on my eyelids and I remember this is another one that I was like I must be doing something wrong and I just kept trying and kept trying I would like scrape off the hard pan and I would go back in and then I'd get hard pan again and it was just terrible and I feel like this palette was like $64 I could be wrong on the price but it was a pricey palette and I was so mad I feel like that might have been one of the very last things that I purchased from Kylie Cosmetics as well I never would purchase um an eyeshadow from her ever again just because I had such a terrible experience with that and I feel like I don't hear like amazing things about her eyeshadow in general but I remember just being so mad that I spent so much money on that palette and I thought it was gonna be the best palette that I ever ever got and I loved the color story and it was just terrible it was terrible did anyone else get that palette and have the same experience I would love to know but after that those are the worst eyeshadow palettes that I can remember using. Again, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below. What are some of the absolute worst eyeshadow palettes you can remember using? I would love to laugh in the comments. Thank you so much if you made it till the end of this video for sticking around to support my channel as you always do. I so appreciate it and I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Bye.